Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the update stream. This is Bugs here. I'm joined today by Artemis and Miss D. Say hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Hi, guys. So it is update day, and we got a good one for you ahead of it all. So let's get into it. Uh, before we do, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Miss D underscore that's me in chat, and we'll get to as many questions as we have the opportunity to. And as with all forced wipe days, we are looking at an update hitting in just about an hour from now at 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. BST. And this update does come with a forced map wipe. And so all servers will wipe maps when this update hits. There is no forced blueprint wipe in store. So it really is going to depend on what server you're on with regards to the blueprints. Pretty much all Rustified servers will wipe blueprints today with the forced wipe, with the exception of our EU and US Medium 3 servers. Also, with the exception of our new freshly launched 2x server, which we soft launched last week and it's going full launch today, but we're not wiping blueprints there either today. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into it. What do we have going on? Well, it is update day and there is a bunch of water related stuff coming on in i believe this update is going to be titled the abyss update and that is because there is a new dlc pack with abyss related stuff in it but before we get into that let's talk about this new water vehicle we got here the tugboat because the tugboat is not only a very large water vessel uh, that is new to the game. A lot of people can fit on it, more than the rib, more than the rowboat, more than any other boat we've seen before. But on top of that, you can actually make it your base. And it's the first kind of floating base we've had uh, hit the game ever. So let's talk about that a little bit more. First of all, how do you get a tugboat? Well, the tugboat is very rare. In fact, there's only about four on a map at a given time. Unlike other watercraft and things like that and various other vehicles you can't purchase this with scrap at say like the fishing village or anything like that as it stands now they just spawn at the harbor and what it is is there's two harbors per map generally speaking and there's two spawn points for the tugboat at each harbor so that equals four total tugboats that you'll find on a map at a given time as long as there are four tugboats on the map we're not seeing any more spawn at the harbors. Now, I do want to preface, all this is subject to change. It still was being developed just before. So as we see with any brand new item hitting the game, uh, it's all subject to change. They might tweak some things afterwards and hot fixes or whatever. So take all this with a grain of salt. But based on our testing, what we were seeing is you're only going to find about four on a map at a time. Sometimes after fresh wipe, I'm only seeing three. In fact, uh, it takes like a little while for the fourth one to spawn. And then if you grab one and you take it out of the harbor, that doesn't mean another one's going to spawn at the harbor. The tugboat that was taken out needs to be destroyed. And then after about 15, 30 minutes or so, you'll see another one spawn at one of the spawn points on the harbor. So that's how you get one. You just got to run to the harbor and secure it. Now, how do you secure it? Well, you do so by getting to that helm area, the like captain's quarters, so to speak. And first and foremost, you probably want to get it out of the harbor. So bring some low grade fuel, pop that low grade fuel in like any other boat and get behind the helm and start steering that boat away from the harbor. Because in the harbor, it's a monument and because it's a monument, you can't build there. So one of the things you're going to want to do to secure this thing is put doors around probably first and foremost the captain's helm. And there's doorways on either side. So there's three doorways total on this boat. And two of them are on either side of the captain's quarters or the helm. So what you want to do is pull this puppy out, fill it with fuel, you drive it just like you normally would any boat, you know, WASD, that whole shebang, and then get it away from the building block area of the monument. And then if you hold E while looking at the dashboard, you can actually use it like a tool cupboard. So you can't place tool cupboards on this, but 
if you hold E on it, you can actually authorize and you can also clear the authorized list just like a tool cupboard. Now there's no tool cupboard storage and we'll get into that whole decay thing and everything like that in a bit, but you'll want to authorize or clear the auth list and then authorize. Uh, and then you have building priv on there. And once you get away from the monument and you have building priv, then you can put some doors and some locks on the doors. Once again, three doorways on the boat total and you can place whatever type of door and lock you want on those to secure it. So you have the two on the captain's helm or the captain's quarters, and then you have one in the main like storage area of the boat. Uh, so this boat isn't very fast. It goes at like 20 knots. It burns a good amount of fuel, especially when you're at full throttle. It's like one low grade fuel every several seconds. And it has a pretty wide turning radius too. So it's not it's not a speed boat. It's not gonna win any races or anything like that. Uh, another cool thing that it has, if you notice looking at the dashboard here, is it does have sonar. So you can actually detect submarines in front and around you uh, on that sonar thing. So you'll be able to see if there's any subs underneath the water coming at you. Now, once you hold E, on the helm and you authorize, you want to start placing some building things down. The three doors and locks is probably your first, you know, bet. And then you want to head down to that main cabin, lock it up, and that's where you can start placing a whole bunch of stuff, some bags, some boxes, some small furnaces, some benches and the like. Now, as you see, as we walk around this boat inside that uh, main cabin is not the only place you can build. You actually have building uh, privilege on various different levels of the boat. So you can put boxes places, you can put bags places, and all this stuff uh, outside of this main cabin as well. Now, there are some limitations to what you can place on this boat. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, when it was first put in, you could place uh, you could place turrets on the front and they auto powered when you powered the boat on and you could like go around the shoreline and just start plowing nakeds down. That is not the case now. That is not the case. You can't place turrets that work. Uh, you can kind of hack one, place it somehow, but you can't even get it to power up or anything. So uh, what you can place is deployables like campfires, sleeping bags, boxes, small furnaces, fridges, tables, chairs, benches, and things like that. Uh, the larger items, when you get into that, like uh, industrial stuff or large furnaces or windmills, you can't place that. You can't really get turrets or any electric electrical stuff, you no know, shotgun traps, nothing like that is working. Also, you can't get a tool cupboard on there because the cupboard kind of is the boat itself. The cupboard's baked into the boat. Now let's talk about damage when it comes to this boat. How do you destroy it if you were to come across one and you want to destroy it? Well, it starts with 3000 HP and in our testing, what we were seeing, and I had to change this on the website. Originally it was four C4, but now actually uh, based on our most recent testing, it's actually eight C4 to destroy the thing when it's at full health or 16 rockets or about 10 torpedoes. It can be hard to see if each torpedo hit is a 100% hit. So we're seeing 10, 11 torpedoes to destroy it. Uh, like other things in the game, you can repair it with a hammer. Uh, you don't need building priv to repair it. It's just wood and metal frags. As long as you have that and a hammer, you can start whacking it within, as long as it's outside, what is it, that 30 second, you know, uh, cool down window after it's damaged you can repair it up by just smacking it with a hammer and you'll it'll just take metal frags and wood. And when you come across it, you'll want to ask, you know, do you want to destroy the whole thing or would it be more advantageous for you to just blow off the doors, clear the off and make it your own floating base? Now you'll want to question that because the other thing about this based on our testing is it decays pretty fast. Even when you're on it, it seems like it's starting to decay pretty quick. And it's not going to be like you can you can secure this and then go out into the middle of nowhere in the water and then just log off and log on 18 hours later and expect a boat there. 
that is not how this works. In fact, our decay test yesterday was showing about six or so hours uh, if we extrapolated it out and the whole boat would decay. So even if you have one and it's at full health and you log off for the night and go to sleep for eight hours and log in, you're not gonna have a boat when you uh, log in. The other interesting thing we're seeing is because the boat is so big, if you're on it when it's destroyed and you jump off to like swim away, it's kind of pulling like a Titanic where it's sucking you down into the water and drowning you. So if you are destroying one of these things, you want to take that into mind. If you're on it and just out in open water and you sink the thing, you don't want to count on being able to swim away because it looks like it actually is sucking you into the water a little bit and pulling you down. So that's another interesting thing that we saw while testing this. But that is the tugboat. Once again, you can build on it, you can lock it up, you can make it your own. You and a bunch of your friends can have a good time on this boat because once again, it's pretty big and there's multiple levels and you can fit a lot of people, a lot of bags and really zerg this thing out if you, uh, if you so choose. And once again, it's a limited resource. There's only four per map based on our testing, based on what we're seeing. You can't buy it willy nilly. You can't save up a couple thousand scrap and go get one. You gotta find it spawning around one of the two harbors and there's only four on the map at any given time. So keep that in mind. Now, next order of business we got is a new monument entering the game. And this is the ferry terminal. And this is a new monument that you'll find spawning near the shoreline, as you would imagine, it's a ferry terminal. And it's got some useful utilities. It's not like a real high-end uh, monument per se, but it does have some good services and utilities that you can visit. There's no radiation, there's no NPCs that we're seeing. And once, a, once again, this is all subject to change. The other thing about the ferry terminal is it looks like, and word on the street, and I'm not sure about this, it's not confirmed, but it looks like this is part of the Nexus server to server transfer body of work. It potentially will be part of that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I have heard that uh, murmurs of that around. So this might be like a placeholder for a further build out of functionality that we'll see come to this monument in the near future. But as it stands, it's just a modest point of interest with several wooden and military crates once again, no NPCs, no radiation. It does link to the underground uh, tunnel system, which is nice. So you can get there from the underground tunnel system. And if you want to access the underground tunnel system, this is a point of ingress to that. And as I said, a couple utilities. There's a car lift that works. There's a recycler that's near the lift. There's also a research table which is inside the main building near the entrance of the underground tunnels. And there's also a repair bench in the yellow shipping container outside of that main building. So you can go here and recycle stuff. You can go here and, you know, reskin or repair items if you want to. You can even go here to research things and then hop down into those underground tunnels if you want and get away. So that is the ferry terminal. I do expect we'll see some changes and, uh, you know, more added to this in the near future, especially with that server to server Nexus transfer stuff, potentially. The other thing is that tugboat may have something to do with that server to server transfer stuff. If you look closely on the tugboat dashboard, there is this little Nexcom uh, thing, which is like a Nexcom frequency and Nexcom Nexus server to server, you know, we're taking boats from one server to another. Maybe, maybe you'll need to like sync up some signal with the ferry terminal at the ferry terminal and then hop in a tugboat to get to another server. I don't know, pure speculation, but it does look like parts of this are going to be a part of something bigger coming in the future. But that is the ferry terminal. Once again, there's just one of these per map that we're seeing. We are seeing it pretty much on every map. So it is a high priority, you know, monument spawn, but as far as loot is concerned, we're basically just seeing some wooden crates and some green military crates. And there are those services, the utilities that you can use. Now onward, we've got the Abyss DLC coming out today as well. And this is a new DLC pack that is a hazmat skin pack that we've seen similar packs like this released in the past. 
Now, I'm happy to say that Face Punch did provide us with one giveaway key. Uh, so I think now's a, as good time as any to uh, start that little giveaway. Shadow, can you say what again in chat you have to do to uh, enter this giveaway once we turn it on? Um, yeah, that would be hashtag giveaway. And I will try to set it up one sec. Cool. Yeah, we're going to turn that move bot giveaway on. And, and then, yeah, do hashtag giveaway in chat once it's on. And you'll have your chance to win this uh, DLC pack. Now, what is included in this DLC pack? Well, it's similar to other DLC packs. It should off. be open. <laughs> it should be open? Okay. I hope so, because everyone's spamming giveaway. So, How long do you want to? Uh, just set a timer for like five minutes. Okay. We'll just do this giveaway for another couple minutes and then declare a winner. But yeah, like other hazmat skin-based DLC packs we've seen in the past, this is just a, mostly aesthetic only changes. It's a skin of the hazmat suit, and it comes with a couple other items that are similarly skinned to have the same, you know, fit in the same vibe. So centerpiece of the DLC is the diver suits. Now, originally we were a little confused. We thought there was just one and then it changed. It turns out there's actually three variations of the diver suit. There's, uh, and you can see them, you can see all this on rustified.com. As always, we do a post every Thursday, uh, along with the stream that summarizes everything in text and pictures. But yeah, if you go there, you can see the three different types of abyss diver suits that we've got. There's uh, the traditional like one portal in the front. Then there's this kind of weird alien one with a bunch of smaller portals all around it. And then there's another one with also one portal in the front, but it's like a rectangular portal. So, and it it's basically just random when you skin the hazmat suit. It's just random which one is applied. So if you have a preference, you know, you might need to reskin it a couple times to get the one that you really want. Uh, but it does seem to be random. Nevertheless, when you buy the DLC pack, you'll get access to all three, even though it is kind of random. Now, I know what everyone's thinking first and foremost. They're like, oh my God, a diver suit. It's a hazmat skin. You can buy it. Does it have oxygen? Does it let you explore underwater? Does it let you see underwater better and go deeper than ever and breathe underwater? No, no, it doesn't do any of that stuff. It's literally just a hazmat suit. So this is no for all you people with your torches ready to go about pay to win. This suit is not pay to win from what we can see. It literally has the same stats as the normal hazmat. It does not provide extra ability underwater via oxygen or seeing better or anything like that. It is just a hazmat suit that has this cool abyss look. And now as we move onward, there's also another... Uh, couple items related to this DLC pack. There's the Abyss Assault Rifle, which is just cosmetic only, just an assault rifle skin, but it's got some seaweed and some netting and a hook for the sight. Uh, so it looks pretty cool. The seaweed kind of moves around as you move and everything. And it's, so it's a little dynamic, you know, hanging off there. You got the hook for the sight and, uh, and yeah, the seaweed just kind of flaps around and you know, has some barnacles on it. Hashtag for salvaged, I guess it says. Uh, so nice little, you know, abyss vibe we got going on with this uh, AK skin, which is also, of course, part of this DLC pack. Now, also, we have, and next on the list, the abyss torch. Now, this is the one where it does have a little extra utility than the normal torch, and that is this abyss torch stays lit when you're underwater. And now for everyone who just lit up their torch and is like, ah, it is pay to win, it is pay to win. I got news for you. It kind of sucks at lighting shit underwater. I mean, it's really not that good at lighting stuff underwater. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's great and I'm just jaded or something. Maybe I'm expecting something different. But I was like lighting it underwater and going underwater in the dark. And I'm like, I can't really see shit. Like it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Maybe maybe it is pay to win. If, it's, if it is pay to win, it's like pay next to nothing to get or pay to get next to nothing you know out of it so i'm not really too concerned 
uh, about the pay to win aspect of this abyss torch, even though it does stay lit underwater, whereas the normal torch doesn't, uh, who cares? But look at it, it looks really cool. Got a nice high fidelity, you know, look and, and a great another little item as part of this abyss DLC pack. And then finally, we have two metal uh, tools as part of this DLC pack as well. We have the Abyss. Uh, <laughs> I almost mispronounced <laughs> that. Um, uh, but we have the Abyss uh, Metal Hatchet and the Abyss Metal Pickaxe. And these also purely aesthetic changes, uh, just, uh, just a cool new look and vibe for these classic metal tools that we're all, uh, you know, we all love and are used to. Uh, the the hatchet kind of drips constantly, which is kind of cool. It's like, uh, along with being all barnacle clad, and I guess it's made out of some form of like shipping stuff. I'm not really sure exactly. I'm no boater myself, but but it does just kind of drip eternally, which is cool. And then we have the pickaxe, which uh, of course is just an anchor um, that's flipped upside down being used as a pick, which is cool. It's got like some rope tied around it for a little grip and it's got some barnacles on it, you know, uh, for that rusty, abyssy kind of look. So that is the final item for the Abyss DLC pack. So once again, it is the diver suits of which there are three. And then it is the Abyss AK, the torch and the hatchet and pickaxe. Once again, the hatchet and pickaxe are metal hatchets and pickaxes. Um, so they're just skins of those items. And this DLC pack, which if you haven't already, do hashtag giveaway in chat. We are It's about away. to end, actually. Okay, yeah. Do <laughs> I'm it letting it just go for a few more minutes if you want. Awesome. And uh, yeah, a huge shout out to Facebunch for giving us a DLC pack to give away here. We're passing it along. So good luck to the winners. And uh, and yeah, we'll let that run for another second. If you haven't had a chance to get in there, just hashtag giveaway in chat. But yeah, this is part, and this is all uh, what's included in the Abyss DLC, which is a new DLC pack, which should be hitting the item store any minute now. Ooh, it's there. I see it. $12.99 US. The item is permanently bound to your Steam account. This is a skin for the hazmat suit item. And you can apply the skin at a repair bench or when you can craft the item in the game. So once again, very similar to the other hazmat related DLC packs we've seen in the past, really not pay to win at all, just cosmetic changes. And I gotta say, looking really awesome too. I love the level of detail. I love the dynamic elements. I love the fidelity of all these things. I just really dig the vibe of all of it. So I do encourage you to head over to the Rust item store and I'll link it real quick in, quick in chat. It'll be lost by a sea of giveaways, but but yeah, there's the item on the item store and I encourage you to go buy it. Once again, $12.99 USD if you're over here stateside. I don't know what the hell it is elsewhere in the world. They change it wherever you are in the world. So, uh, But it is available for purchase now on the item store. So I encourage you to go pick it up. Now, also, as we're going through uh, the tugboat and this abyss stuff and the ferry terminal, we're probably looking around and like, hey, does that water look different? Why, yes. Yes, it does. Because there is a new water system going live with this update as well. And so this is basically what was on the Water 5 branch for a while. We saw this being worked on. And it is finally making its way in with the update today. And if you're looking at it, you're probably like, wow, that's, that's some blue water. Yes, yes, it is a little bit more blue. And on top of that, it's got some fresh animations. It's got some fresh effects, some like foamy effects, some nice reflections, some different looking waves and everything, uh, and some smoother transitions with other elements when you get to like the shore and different biomes and stuff like that. You'll notice just the water looks better. And when you go underwater at certain points, you can see some like sun rays and stuff. It looks a little different underwater as well. Uh, but really just some great looking, you know, water effects that we're seeing come into play uh, with this update. No, like, big differences as far as, like, how the water works. We're not seeing any tidal waves come in. We're not seeing 
any huge fundamental changes to like the dynamic nature of the water, but it is fresh animations, fresh looks, and just some new fidelity and some new visuals that you're going to see here. Also, ideally, we are going to see some performance improvements with this because I think optimi optimization was a piece of it, but I'm not confirmed. I'm kind of waiting on the dev blog for that one to come out uh, to see for sure what kind of optimizations we might be seeing with this new water. But I do believe optimization was a piece of this water five branch as well. So hopefully we can squeeze a couple more FPS out of this puppy uh, when this update goes live as well. But really, I think the water looks great. Uh, I think it, it just looks more realistic. It looks higher fidelity, the animations, the reflections, the transitions, all of it, uh, the little details, it's just looking nice. So good job to the devs on this new water system as well. It was a little while in the making. So it's nice to see it finally go live in the game. And what better to go live with than this new tugboat and the Abyss DLC pack and the ferry terminal. Now, on top of this, there's various fixes coming into the game as One well. One sec. Ooh, I'm going to end the, uh, yeah, I'm going to close it now. We have 1,020 right now. So we're going to draw. All right, let's draw. It is 69 Karam. So 69, is. yeah. <laughs> of course it is. So, well, congrats. Um, 69 Karam Su 69. So if you can PM me here on Twitch and send me your Steam ID, we will hand you the key. Yes, please uh, DM on Twitch. Uh, Miss D underscore be that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to catch myself there again. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and with that, just hand over your Steam ID, and then we got to get the Steam ID to Face Punch, and they'll gift you the. Uh, gift you that DLC pack and congratulations on winning. Yes, congratulations. And awesome. And if you didn't win and you want this DLC pack, well, you can get it. It's available now for purchase on the Rust item store. Head on over and it's like the first item there, 12.99 US and you get 3 of these awesome diver suits and 4 other items, the torch, the AK and the two metal tools, the pickaxe and the hatchet, all with the cool abyss vibe and everything. And yeah, good stuff. So also we've got a number of various fixes coming into the game today. They fixed the combat knife uh, crate untie, not counting towards mission status. That was just a weird little thing. They fixed industrial pipes getting destroyed when upgrading grades. Uh, that's awesome uh, because that was a real pain in the ass sometimes when you're building your pipes and then you decide you want to change to a different skin or upgrade and the pipes just disappear. And it's like, where'd my pipes go? Uh, so that's nice to see. They updated the brick window block to have rectangular shape like other blocks. Uh, I think that actually, yeah, that's probably part of a building block thing that hasn't come in yet. So disregard that one. Uh, they disabled the delete button from showing on outpost and bandit respawn points in softcore mode. Cool. They fixed boom boxes failing to reconnect to a valid station after an unsuccessful reconnection attempt. And then they also fixed the conveyor screen, not showing item transfers if the item is being stacked in the output container. So a couple different various fixes. I think there might've been a couple more sneaking in. We'll see on the dev blog, uh, the various fixes that we've got coming in today. There's also a bunch of shader improvements coming in today. This is hard to quantify. I'm looking to the dev blog for some specific examples, but just overall the shaders in the game have been modified and you can see in certain instances with certain lighting effects and certain environmental scenarios that like, hmm, does that look a little different? Yeah, yeah, it does because they did shader improvements and we'll see more on that in the dev blog. Also, as related to all this underwater and water related activity, the combat knife can now rapidly untie underwater crates. So if you love diving underwater to get your loot from those underwater crates, bring a combat knife because it will rapidly untie those bad boys. And also, this is a cool one, the spray can no longer loses condition when reskinning an entity. So you can reskin at your heart's content and you don't have to worry about the spray can getting broken. So that's cool. 
And that is about what we have going on in this update today. Now, we do have a couple other things going on. Uh, one I want to announce, I'm proud to announce that this is the official launch of our first 2x server today. You can find it on the modded list. Uh, we tried a little something different with this. We waited a while to get into this space, and we really got a lot of feedback from different groups and everything on what they'd be looking because we didn't want to just create another random 2x server. There's a lot of those already. Uh, we wanted it to be a little something different, a little something special. So what we landed on is actually it will wipe Tuesdays and Fridays at 3 p.m. GMT. So it's like kind of an off wipe uh, schedule, which is cool. Monthly blueprint wipes at Forest. Although we did a soft launch last week, so the blueprints won't be wiped today because as a thank you to the people who helped the soft launch and the testing, they're able to keep their blueprints for this month. Uh, the map size is 3.5K. We found that was like a good balance to get enough monuments on the map and still keep it small enough to have a lot of PVP action. It is hosted in London, so good middle ground for the world. And a couple specific server modifications. We've got 2.5x gather on sulfur, 2x gather on all other resources, half crafting speed and smelting speed for non-rateable resources. Workbenches cover the entire base so you don't have to be standing right next to the thing. We removed and modified a bunch of the loot tables to remove the, uh, the junk from there and really optimize the loot tables for 2x accelerated gameplay experience. And also the blueprints for building electricity and other basic tier one stuff are default so you don't have to grind through getting those blueprints all the time so check it out after wipe it is uh on the modded list or you can connect with just the f1 connect command of connect 2x.rustified.com and uh, it's going to be 200 to 300 pop when we wipe and ideally i want to up the pop and up the map size over time as it builds momentum and builds popularity but ideally this is a cool place if like you get offline rated on a normal wipe server and you're like, ah, shit, that really, that sucks. Uh, well, then on an off day, you can go and have an accelerated gameplay experience on our 2X uh, until another normal server wipes at the normal time. So that's cool. And also, uh, we've got Hapis map updates as well. Hapis is no longer officially supported, if you're not aware. The devs stopped supporting it, but the community team over at Hapis Rust started picking up. Shout out to Cyfex and his team over there uh, because they've been doing an amazing job over the past couple months of not only bringing Hapis back, but then bringing it back better than ever and adding a bunch of new stuff like every month. And so what we're seeing this month is an all new cave system. There's also thin ravines that go into another cave system. And they added the above ground train system as well to Hathis. So it's a great static map gameplay experience with some new stuff on there. And that is going to be on our US and EU ZenLab servers after wipe. So you can find those on the official list and it's going to be a cool time. So check out Hathis. Also, I did want to quickly thank all the people who helped us test the 2X server, by the way, and people who gave feedback on our 2X server. We did do a bunch of changes to loot and various other gameplay related things in the first week of uh, the soft launch and testing. And a huge thank you to everyone who helped us test that. That was really appreciative and appreciated. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, and yeah, just shout out to you all. Thank you. And yeah, that's what we've got going on in this update. Uh, we've got any questions from the audience? And just for anyone tuning in, we do expect the force wipe and the update to happen in the next 20 to 25 minutes. Generally speaking, we have the server update hit first, and that's normally probably in about five, 10 minutes. And then we'll see the client update and the dev blog hit about 10, 15 minutes after that. And that's when we say the update is live. So we are less than half an hour away from this update and force wipe going on so feel free to ask any questions miss d underscore that's me in chat and uh yeah we'll get to as many as we can let's do it um what happens to boxes slash deployables on the boat after it sinks furnaces usually can be deployed below water level that's a good question are we seeing like floating loot crates come up uh for the loot that's lost right so no we're not so basically, at the moment, when the boat goes down, everything goes down with it, and that includes players too. It's very hard to get back up um, once the boat kind of goes down, you're kind of pulled in with it. And then when it gets all the way down to the bottom, does it just despawn and it despawns everything? Or It looks at the 
because there are despawns, everything that's deployed um, within the boat. And in terms of player bodies, they come back up and you're able to loot them. Okay, cool. I think it would be a great addition for the devs to, given there could be a real lot of loot on here, to have one of those like floating boxes come up, like like with the rib, basically. But I can see how that would be harder because it's not like an onboard uh, storage for the boat. It's all these additional deployables that were That's added. Good, so yeah. I can see like accounting for that from a coding standpoint would, would be much more complex than just like the rib. Uh, but that would be a cool thing to add. But great question, by the way. How do you get the tugboat? So the tugboat, you can't buy. It's a very scarce resource. There's only three or four on a map at a given time. I say three or four because when I fresh wiped a server, a lot of times I'm only seeing three spawned. You do like the dump command, and then you can look in the uh, diagnostics folder and see like the object count for each entity. And a lot of times when I updated a server and did a fresh wipe, I do a dump command immediately and see only three tugboats. And then after about half hour, I'd see four spawn. But basically what we're seeing is we're seeing four spawn per map. It's two per harbor. And generally speaking, there's two harbors on each map and they're just spawning there. Now, if you take a tugboat out of the harbor and make it your own, from what we're seeing, another tugboat isn't spawning in that harbor spawn spot, unless the tugboat you took out or another tugboat is destroyed. So it looks like they're capping it to four tugboats per server at the moment. And yeah, you can't buy it. You can't do anything. If one gets destroyed, uh, then another one within like half hour or so will spawn uh, at the harbors. And you don't want to confuse the like destroyed sunken tugboats at the harbor for this tugboat. Uh, they do look similar. They're a similar model, um, but they're kind of the ones that are sunken and not usable are kind of half underwater so you can kind of tell look for the floating tugboat at harbor and then hop on there drive put some low grade in it drive it away from the harbor so you can actually get building privilege and place things and uh, then you can make it your own is there a chance that you can see the water splash when you swim or jump in the water i can try and jump in the water um yeah i do I do wonder how much other water, like parts of this new water system, like are there that we haven't seen yet. I saw someone asking for big waves during a storm. Um, I haven't noticed that yet, but maybe we can change the day a couple of times, see if we can get to a stormy day and see if we notice anything. Ooh, server update is live. Look at that. Uh, even a smidge early, which is awesome. So the server update is live. Let me tweet about that real quick. Oh, shit, I didn't tweet about our update stream being live. Oh, we'll send that out. <laughs> oh, well. Update um, stream Artemis, is live late. Can you try and yeah. take a look in the box that I placed inside on the, the uh, research table? Because that's stuff yeah, that you cannot it. place. Um, obviously, you can't place any electrical stuff, so I didn't put that in there. That's it. Just a but, quick note on the other deployables, yeah. basically. So all those guys are not allowed. Yeah. So yeah, you can't place turrets and traps and stuff like that. You want to splash about in the water a bit more? Yeah, let's go see you splash about a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> let's jump. Woo! Let's see D's nuts splashing about in the in water. The water yeah. I don't get why it's showing like that because I did change the name before the I started the game even. Yeah, I think it's your Steam nickname thing or something like that. Yeah, it's weird because I did change. Ah, it's fine. Do you use nuts? And how about if you swim under the water? I need to go up because I'm going to drown. <laughs> yeah, I think if anything, it's less evident when someone's swimming about, especially under. Yeah, yeah, it might be. And I see people asking about the decay of the tugboat. And I don't know about a decay if it's like, because I know it, the other vehicles will decay smaller or uh, it take longer to decay uh, when they're like inside. But this boat's so damn big, I don't think you can get it inside. So it's basically just decaying 
from the get-go. How I tested this yesterday was I did a freshly wiped server. I took a brand new boat. I took it out of the harbor. I placed a couple things on it. I got TC access and everything. And then I just stood on the boat and waited. And what I was seeing is it started decaying. It looked like pretty much immediately. And I extrapolated it out and it was losing like 500 HP an hour. And at 3000 HP, I'm not a mathematician, but I think that's like six hours. So it seems like the whole thing will decay in roughly six hours. Maybe there is a short time that I missed before it starts decaying. So maybe it's more like six and a half, seven hours, but that's what I was seeing. And also this could have changed between last night uh, and today because I haven't tested this again today, just for the record. Uh, but what we were saying is it does decay pretty quick. Uh, I wouldn't get a tugboat, put a couple doors on it, and be like, well, my wipe set, I'm going to log off and come back tomorrow and then own everyone with the tug because you're going to wake up on the beach, my friend, as a naked because your tugboat will have long since decayed and uh, been wrecked or taken over by some other team. Uh, so it does decay pretty quick to maintain one of these and hold on to one of these over the course of the wipe. You're going to need a pretty dedicated team that's on multiple times a day to repair the thing. Once again, the repair process is easy. You don't even need build priv. You just grab a hammer, some metal frags, and some wood, and then just whack the puppy like you would any other vehicle you're repairing. And uh, then you can, you know, repair it. Do you plan to make one of your long servers to not white blueprints? At the moment, that isn't in the works. And one of the reasons it's not is because I've been holding out for this Nexus, the server to server transfer stuff. For that server to server transfer stuff to work, you need servers that share a wipe time and can share blueprints. And what I'd love to do, I think it'd be really cool if we linked up, we have three long servers in EU and three long servers in US. I think it would be cool if we linked up at least the ones regionally. I don't wanna link up an EU server with a US server because that pings, but if we had three long servers linked, uh in the us and three in the eu that would be really cool i feel like um and who knows maybe it sucks maybe it'll be awful and we'll turn it off you know we'll, we're open to trying anything but uh but i think it would be really cool and so given that i don't want to change the the blueprint schedule we have the no blueprint wipes on medium threes and we are going to play with linking the medium one and medium twos together but we can't link all three because you know blueprints don't wipe on medium threes unless forced so long-winded way of explaining my thought process here, but uh, yeah, all to say, no plans to set a long server to no BP wipe. Hey, I was wondering how fast the tugboat is. Is it faster than a submarine or a rowboat? Uh, it goes at like 20 knots, so it's relatively slow. The max speed is like 21, 22 knots if you get going. I'm trying to think, how fast is a submarine? I feel like most things are faster. Yeah, I think pretty much everything is faster than this guy. So it's pretty slow. It's got a wide turning radius. It burns a lot of fuel. Uh, you can see at full throttle that fuel going down one, one fuel every you know couple seconds. Uh, so yeah, this is no speedster. Oh yeah, we hit 2425. They might have upped the speed just a little bit. And also with all this stuff, keep in mind, it's all subject to change because it's all still in active development. So they might launch it today and then say, oh, you know what? That balance is a little off. Let's do a hot fix tomorrow that changes it. So take everything with a grain of salt, but it is a little faster today than what we were seeing in our testing earlier this week. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. And it does seem to be bouncing around on the waves and everything too, so that might have an impact. Yeah, yeah, that is another feature of the new water system, it seems, which is cool. And once again, for anyone tuning in, the server update is live. We expect the client update and the dev blog to hit any moment now in the next like maybe five, 10 minutes. 
and then we'll say the actual update is live and we're already working on wiping our servers. I do wanna say real quick, the past couple of weeks, we've been having an issue with Steam auth timeouts. And I say we, not as Rustified, I say we as in Rust as a whole. Whenever any Rust server wipes and a bunch of them wipe together, what we're experiencing is a bunch of players getting Steam auth timeouts for like half hour to an hour. This seems to be a throttling thing that Steam added. Uh, Face Punch was talking to Steam, but I don't think the talks went too well because I'm pretty sure Steam was like, no, we're not throttling shit. Uh, but clearly something's being throttled because what we're seeing is after a fresh wipe server and especially a couple popular servers wipe together and a whole bunch of people try to connect at once, it looks like some sort of rate limiter comes into effect on the Steam off end and a bunch of people are timed out. I have not gotten any word that that is fixed. And so this next hour could be a real pain in the ass with Steam off timeouts as we have every Rust server wiping. Now, let's all intend that Valve did fix it. Let's all intend that this doesn't happen and everyone can just join the server they want to very smoothly. But I, I do mention it because if you get hit with a steam off timeout, don't come into our discord saying fix your fucking servers because it's not our servers. This is a steam issue. This is a game wide issue. And I'm sure you'll still come into our discord and say fix your fucking servers. And that's fine. I still love you. But just know and setting the context that this is a known issue hopefully it's fixed but if it's not you basically just have to wait half an hour to an hour i've heard some people have some luck with uh restarting steam multiple times or retrying joining the server multiple times but literally there's nothing we can do on our end uh other than wait it out also we are not going to roll back any server wipes we're not going to shut the servers down because you can't join and other people can sorry we're just not going to do it we have to just wait for this issue to resolve so that's a heads up but once again knock on wood intending that that's not an issue today because maybe one of Gaben's like uh, coders fixed it, hopefully changed, added a couple zeros at the end of that rate limiter variable or something. I don't know, but here's hoping. Anyway, do we have any other questions before we, uh, or while we got time here before this client update hits? We sure do. Um, is there no way to prevent the decay at all? And isn't it a waste then to build on it if it's decay anyways? Yeah, that's that's your prerogative, man. I'm not sure. Uh, it does have a lot of utility. It's a floating friggin' base that you can fit your whole team on and a bunch of stuff you can respawn on it anywhere uh, in the ocean. So it, it kind of makes sense that the balance of that would be you got to upkeep the thing every hour. Otherwise, you're going to lose it. Also, given there's only four per map, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And once again, it's all subject to change. It all very well might change. I wonder if we can change the day here and find a stormy day and see if that changes the water at all. We can try it. Uh, I'll take care of that. We're on day 20. Let's try day 12. Yes. Let's see, is that a stormy day? It takes like a second for it to update. In the meantime, how many meantime. HVs to destroy the boat? Oh, how many HV rockets were we seeing? I imagine it would be like 20 or something, right? Yeah, last time we tested it was 20. I can test again. Trying a couple <sighs> different days here, trying to find a stormy day. We'll see. Mm -hmm. The suspense. Can you shoot the AK under the water? No, no, it's just cool. Do the skin tools have a different sound effect like the Lumberjack DLC? So the pickaxe does actually, so if you guys bear with me. Can you place vending machines on the tugboat? Sorry if I missed the question. No, uh, you it's cannot. No vending. Yeah. I think you can do it in the front though, but then you can't access because you know it's blocking the door. Ah, uh, yeah, good point. And a little listen for the pickaxe. Hopefully, that's coming through. It's just like a little chain jingle, basically. Yeah, nice. Hatchet's the same. 
And for anyone tuning in, the server update is live. We are minutes away from the client update hitting, and at which point we will say the update is officially live. We're already taking our servers down to update them and wipe them, uh, but this client update is still pending and the dev blog is still pending. We expect it any moment now. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to do uh, Misty underscore that's me in chat and we'll get to as many <laughs> as we can. Is the boat fast enough to get to cargo? Yeah, I mean, it's you're not going to get there as fast as the rib, but you can get there. How does the top boat decay work? Ooh, look at that. The dev blog is live. Let me tweet about it real quick. So the decay at the moment, it doesn't do anything you can really do to stop it decaying. Um, in terms of trying to build it in to see if a roof would slow it down, you can't build anything with uh, the stability great enough to kind of rip it in and get it back out again. All right, cool. And for anyone tuning in, the server update is live. The dev blog did just go live as well. We're still waiting on that client update to say the update is totally officially live, but that should hit any moment now. How does the tub boat decay work? Yeah, it basically just starts decaying. You can't seem to get it under or inside anywhere because it's too freaking big. And maybe someone will prove me wrong. Feel free to, I'm fine with that. Uh, been wrong before, but as we're seeing it, basically it just seems to start decaying. It decays at a rate of about 500 HP an hour from what we're seeing. So with 3000 HP, you extrapolate that out, you get about six hours of before the tugboat's completely gone. So you need a hammer, you need some wood, you need some metal frags. You don't need building proof to uh, repair it, but you just want to whack that puppy with some wood and metal frags, and then you can repair it up back to full health. But it does decay pretty quick. You're not going to be able to set up your tugboat, log off, uh, wake up in the morning, go to school, and then come back and expect to still have your tugboat base. Can you show us the terminal? Yeah, we can head back over to the uh, terminal. And someone else was asking, can you place uh, planter boxes on the tugboat? And no, you cannot. Good question, though, yeah. Does the new torch light up the ocean floor in the darkness? A little bit, but not... I mean, am I wrong on this, guys? Are you seeing, like, a lot of illumination out of this torch? No, I would say not even a little bit. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have any physical effect um, when you're underwater. Yeah, so for anyone saying, oh my God, it's pay to win, I can go underwater and still keep the torch lit. It's like, that's not doing much for you. So I wouldn't worry about it. Let me see here. Uh, how many rockets to destroy the tugboat? We were seeing 16 rockets, normal rockets to destroy a tugboat and eight C4. Yes. And if you get raided, I would probably just have a diving suit all the time with a diving tank because you're going to drown with the boat if you don't have that on. Yeah, the boat pulls a full-blown Titanic when it goes down. It sucks you down with it. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, have it would be good to have a little some diving gear on hand just in case that inevitability happens. You can grab some of your high-priced loot and swim off with it. Do you want to see if we can get the storm from another day? Oh, yeah. I tried like seven days and I didn't find any. You could, um, you could <sighs> write a storm box if you, if you like. Yeah, go for it. Um, it never... has to be service. Yeah, that's why I never have luck with it. Do you remember what the C-bar is? Because I can RDP into the box. Uh, I think it's weather load dot storm. Something, one of those combinations. Yeah, let me try real quick. I feel like this client update is going to hit any second now anyway, but hey, we got some time. And feel free to keep asking questions if you have any more. It's just a lot of questions, and a lot of them got missed too because of the giveaway. 
Um, can you get a license to the tugboat? We got a gifted sub, by the way, uh, oh, from okay. Tiziano29. <laughs> the giveaway is ended, guys. But yeah, I do want to thank everyone for the support, for tuning in, for the gifted subs, for the bits, for whatever, because a lot of people think we're developers of the game or we're on the face punch payroll. In fact, that is not the case. We're just an independent organization who loves this game, loves tracking development of the game and running the best servers that we can. And the only way that we can do that consistently is with the support and from the support of the community. So to everyone who gives bits, subscribes on Twitch and to our wonderful, beautiful, loyal VIP customers, thank you all so much for the support because we wouldn't be able to do this without you. So thank you. And I see the weather dot storm chance. Maybe I can just pump that all the way up. In the meantime, waiting for the weather, we have a charitable rush coming up as well. Oh yeah, mark your calendars. October 14th and 15th is Charitable Rust. It's a month early this year. We are supporting Charity Water, which seems really fitting actually, given this update. And uh, it's an awesome event. We've uh, an awesome charity. We've supported them before in the past. Really excited. We're gonna be changing the way that we do this event where we're actually gonna have some accelerated gameplay action going on on a modified Happus server for the weekend and a bunch of prizes and everything to go along with that. Um, and we'll have more information coming in the near future. We're going to do some awesome skins and all this stuff and a contest for that. Uh, but in the meantime, just mark your calendars, October 14th and 15th. This is Saturday and Sunday, mid-October, and it's going to be an amazing time for an amazing cause. And yeah, we've got more information uh, coming in the near future. Do we have any Rustified related? Do we have mod applications open or anything? Ah, uh, I think the apps are open, but I'm not sure we're going to be accepting anyone until September again. But yeah, you can always feel free to apply at rustify.com slash apply uh, to be a Discord mod, server mod, or part of the community team. And also, Rustify related announcement uh, on our ZenLab servers, EU and US ZenLabs. We've got an updated version of Hapis. Shout out to Cyfex and his team over at uh, Community Hapis. Uh, for this cool update, there's an all new cave system, there's new ravines, and also they added the above ground train system as well. Uh, so that's going to be a really cool update. And um, once again, on our US and EU ZenLab servers, which you can find on the official list. Also, we've got our official launch of our 2X server. This is our first 2X server hosted out of London uh, is launching today. It's going to have Tuesday and Friday wipe times. So a little like off wipe accelerated gameplay option for you if your wipe gets screwed up at another server and you just want some fresh wipe fast gameplay action. Uh, that's going to be found at connect2x.rustified.com or you can find it on the modded list as well. And for anyone just tuning in, we are waiting on this client update to hit. Uh, the server update is out and the dev blog is out, but the client update has not quite made it out yet from what I'm seeing. And I wonder, I wonder if Steam is having some issues, because we have seen some Steam issues in the recent I past. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything in the chat right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I actually saw the... a second ago a lot of people say Steam is down. So. Yeah, yeah, that might be an issue which would suck. But normally we would have seen the client update hit by now. So it does have me thinking there might be some delay on the update end. Let's see if I can find anything in my... Uh... I see a lot of people asking where the hell the update is. Uh, and I see some people complaining about Steam off timeouts. No, I'm not even going to say Oh yeah, That's it's getting even... there now. <laughs> no. And I do want to remind everyone, the Steam off timeout issue, this is a Rust-wide issue. This is so frustrating. 
Valve and Steam released an update. Uh, if you remember the one f like several weeks ago that Steam was like down for, it, they did the Tuesday update, but it was down for most of Tuesday night and even into Wednesday. Uh, ever since that, when we wipe a server, when any Rust server that's popular wipes with at the same time other Rust servers do, it seems to hit this rate limit thing where everyone trying to connect or most people trying to connect, connect uh, hit a Steam off timeout. And that Steam off timeout kind of hangs out for about half hour to an hour. And then it gradually goes away. Super, super frustrating issue. Facebunch said they were talking to Valve about it. I think I heard that Valve got back to them earlier this week and said, no, we're not rate limiting shit, uh, which is not a great answer because it's definitely a problem. And someone's rate limiting something because this is not uh, normal behavior. Uh, but it's all to say, if you do get Steam timeout it issues after this update comes out and you can't connect to your favorite server, uh, please don't uh, flame the server owner because it's not the server owner doing it. Uh, it's just a game-wide issue right now that we're experiencing. I was hoping it would be resolved by now, but maybe it's not. Maybe it still is. Here's hoping. But also this client update should be out by now and it's not so i'm wondering if there's some other steam stuff going on as well we'll keep you posted though and in the meantime if you have any other questions feel free to ask because uh we're just hanging out waiting for this client update to hit Bux, can you confirm um if the new server is going to wipe today or not yeah the new server it's a force wipe so the new server does wipe today and it will wipe again tomorrow. And I know you might be saying, well, why the hell would I play there today? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't, no one's forcing you to play anywhere. So, but it does wipe again tomorrow at 3 p.m. GMT. That is kind of a weird feature. I'll call it a feature of choosing to have a server that wipes Tuesdays and Fridays. And I'm not sure I pronounced this right, but we got five gifted from El Elias the Ancient, I think. Awesome. Thank Just you for the gifted five. subs. Much appreciated as we are not the developers of the game. We're not on Face Punch's payroll. We are just independent fans of the game who love reporting on development news and running the best servers we can. So we really do uh, rely on the support of the community. So to everyone who supports us, thank you so much. And yeah, we're still just waiting on this client. Just got, to hit. <laughs> we got another gifted from Woods. Ooh, thank you, Woods. It looks like some people are saying it's out, which is Why cool. don't you do a little recap, maybe? We haven't even done that because there's been so much to show. Oh, yeah, it's true. So a little recap, and maybe the client update is out. Maybe restart your Steam and see if you see it. Oh, uh, shit, my... sorry. He just oh, gifted five more. <laughs> oh, five more. And I did just see the ping for client update is out. So the client update is officially out. Let me tweet about it. Oh, and Jay is also? What the hell? 10 gifted from Jaceling. Thank you so much, Jay. Hell yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, look at this. The client update is live. Go update your clients. If you don't see the update on your Steam library, restart Steam or start verifying the integrity of your game and then like cancel it immediately. That'll ping Steam for an update. But get that update in. We're updating our servers and getting this fresh wipe gameplay action going ASAP. And yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a recap or anything like that. I want to go make sure our servers are up and running. I want to see how Steam is running and make sure that's all going as well. Another as five gifted. I'm sorry and to interrupt, so but there's the so gifted many stuff. gifted right now. <laughs> Love you guys so much. And thank you so much for the support. We also have someone we're going to raid after. Oh, yeah, we are going to raid. And let me get that. And God, I hope this raid happens smoothly. We have not had luck with raids in the past month or so, but let's give it a go here. Let's see what happens. And if this raid doesn't work, I'm moving to kick. Fuck it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh, more so, gifted subs. Thank you, man. Yeah, we're going Jace to Lane. raid uh, Sebi all this. So go give him a follow and show some love. Yeah, give Sebi K a follow. He's an awesome streamer. And uh, yeah, let's see if this thing works. And thank you all. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. Oh, looks like the raid is probably working. Thank you to my co Artemis and Miss D, as always, for being here. You're welcome, as always. And yeah, 
Awesome stuff, everyone. Love you all. Catch you all next week. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. This is Bugs signing off.